All right, here we go. All right, there are a whole barrage, a tremendous number of ink tests that can be performed on ink. And that's what we're going to look at. Okay. The most obvious ink test is the color. Is the color correct? So it's the most obvious property. And you can look at it by eye, say, okay, it looks like the sample, that's a match. You can use a color book like Canton, which is uh, my country, pretty much the industry standard. I'm sure that you use Pantone here, right? So you can use a Pantone guide, and that's a match. Or you can use an instrument. And to measure color, you might measure the density of that color, which means how dark is, is that color of it for itself? How, how rich is it? A light, a light, thin film of blue will have lower density than a thick film of that same ink, relatively speaking. You can, so that would be measured with a densitometer, which is a device. That looks like a stapler, a big stapler. You put it down on the color, and it, 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 it reads it, and it gives you a value. A spectral densitometer is a little more sophisticated. A spectral densitometer, you can measure spot colors with, and you have basically, this is the visible spectrum. It runs from about 400 nanometers to 700 or maybe 720 nanometers, okay? There is light energy in this direction and there is light energy in that direction, but our eyeballs don't see it. So what a spectral densitometer will do is take this part of the spectrum, the visible part, it divides it in increments, perhaps every two nanometers, perhaps every 10 nanometers, let's say 10 nanometers, along the way, and for each point along the way, it gives you an intensity value. And it has a curve. Every color has a unique curve, and the instrument can distinguish and say it's a close match or it is a far match, okay? So you can measure color by a variety of means informally. When I started printing, the work order would come out and it'd say red. One day I'd pick up a bucket of 185 red, the next day I'd pick up warm red, the next day I'd pick up blue bean red. No problem, the customer bought it all. So, they, so it could be a simple matter of is it the right color even if it's not a match? But that's no longer true that way. Now, <clears throat> there are uh, adhesion tests for how the ink adheres to the substrate. So there's a tape, special tape that 3M Scotch makes and it's been standardized for the industry. They say, yeah, that's the right tape. If you put it on the printed material, you rub it once with your finger and you peel it off. If it stays on there, good. If it comes off, bad. You can check the treat level. Okay, I mentioned that film undergoes exposure to an arc of electricity called the corona, and the, the surface energy of that film is measurable. And we use fluids of known dying values, and we put them on there, and we interpret them, and we can tell what the surface energy of that uh, film is. You see the way I, I'm not gonna go so in deep into each and every process, I want you to hear it when I say it, and you do your homework. If you print on films, and you just heard that I said that there's a way of testing it, now it's time to do some homework and get that stuff and find out how to do it specifically for your environment. There's a crinkle adhesion test. You take the material between the two fingers, you, about 10 times. Did any ink come off? 
There is a scratch resistance. You can just take the back of your nail. We used to have a standard, one a checklist. And when an operator would come and they would present me with their checked product, and I'm not going to sign off on that product, we would scratch it with our nail. Blocking resistance. When you rewind a roll that's been printed, if it's difficult to peel off because the ink is, you know, maybe liquid still or something, that's blocking. Blocking can occur even without ink for other reasons, but we're talking about ink-related blocking. Okay? So you can, there's a, a C-clamp with a couple of blocks of wood. <clears throat> you clamp the material together, you separate it, see if it blocks. There's a special test in a, in a controlled chamber where with a special things and they uh, see if it'll block or you can just peel it off the pole and see if, it, if it's going to block and if, it, if it's blocking now you don't even have to conduct those other tests unless you're interested in the magnitude of the block lamination adhesion sometimes we print on a substrate film and then we put another film on top of it so that the ink becomes sandwiched between those two layers and cannot touch food or touch an individual. However, that ink must be compatible with the adhesive so that it doesn't create a, 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 a part there where it they, they can delaminate. So there's a tape, you conduct a, ta a tape test on the ink before it gets laminated uh, and the roll. You conduct a, cr a crinkle test when it's already been laminated. You can use a tension meter with, that sees how much force is required to separate the two laminates, and you can standardize that. Uh, or you can do a pressure block resistance test. Um, I want to share an anecdote with you at a, at, a, at a client's plant. They had an interesting phenomenon, and it didn't manifest itself instantly. They print. They laminate, the roll sits, a few days later they go to convert it, and where there's ink, there are air bubbles or, or bubbles of gas in between the film. So you have any compatibility there, okay? Rub resistance, there's a special southern rub resistance, which uh, you can look it up if you're interested, and it's basically a function, a, a measure of how much it comes off. I'll give an example. Uh, offset printed newspapers, not flexo printed newspapers, but a lot of times offset printed newspapers, you read it and when you're done your hands are black or have a grayness on them. That, that, those ink have cool rub. They rub off. <clears throat> Heat resistance. You have a little iron, you put it on top of the ink and you slide it in a controlled specified fashion, prescribed fashion. Here are a few, for example. These are posted on my forum. One, one guy named SGA said a 16 ounce hammer with a square towel, the kind that comes in a rectangular pack or paper package, blah, 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 12 strokes, or it sounds very informal, right? A hammer and all these things. But he was able to standardize that test. Another one says, I've used UV runners over 20 years. I always use a piece of scotch tape. I try to remove the label from the roll. If it, if, if, uh, now that's kind of peculiar. That sounds like a crazy idea. He takes a tape, a uh, 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 scotch tape. Now he has a roll of labels. Puts it on the UV ink. If the uh, label won't lift, the UV is not cured. If it lifts, it does. The, the idea being that Something uh, on the uncured ink is not allowing the label to adhere well to the tape so it doesn't get lifted off. Uh, that one, I'm, you yeah. know. But interesting, there are ways to check things. There's a fingernail scratch test, depth of cure competitor, comparator, MEK test, that where you use MEK. There's a variety of ways to. Uh, to check to see if your ink is cured. What I think you should do is discuss this with your UV uh, lamp 
ink supplier and your ink people. Get together and work it out. They've done research. They're in the field. Rely on them. My suppliers and vendors are an extension of my company. And I solicit them for information. They are interested in my success, and I take advantage of that. So here are some others that we won't go into. Cure, opacity, color string, track, how two colors print on top of each other, a density, the contrast ratio. You take a densitometer, you measure a solid patch, and you measure perhaps a 75% patch, and you see, you compare those two values. Fade resistance. Uh, I worked at a, a, a uh, plastics wide wrap shop, and the in guy, he put plastic bags on top of the uh, roof of the building. Because uh, they were shipping sacks, large sacks of plastic that uh, would carry fertilizer or uh, gardening things or you know, things that you might see outside in some store, it's exposed to light, you don't want the ink to disappear. As a matter of fact, I once threw an envelope on the dash of my car. There was a blue and a red ink printed on there. Sometime later, I got it out, and there was absolutely no red left. It was not even perceptible that it was ever there while the blue was still there. Gloss, coefficient of friction, odor, residual solvent. Take a standardized size of material, put it in a chamber, heat it up, gas is taken, inject it into something, and we use a gas chromatograph to measure what solvents are in there and how, what concentration. And we, there are limits to what we'll accept. Uh, and other tests, depending on what you need the ink to do, what your product is, and so on. T the, the tests you do are driven by that. The ink properties of the test performed depend on the end use and performance requirements. Not all inks, nor all products, undergo the same tests. And press approval checklists should accommodate appropriate Test. So here's something I want to share with you real quickly. 